Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That will be done, Lord. This will be a, a very diff, different and difficult video for me to make. Unlike anything I have ever made before. So I will not show my normal intro with the flames and all that. And at this point, I will not say my introduction line like I normally say. I will simply say, I have made a very big, colossal mistake. And I beg your forgiveness. And I beg forgiveness from God, too. Where I made my mistake is a number of years ago, I listened to men and not the Holy Spirit. I listened to two preachers from two different churches who both, in effect, pointed to the, their diplomas hanging on the wall. And they told me, in so many words, they told me that they were above me, that they were smarter than me, and I believed them. They both told me the same lie, and I believed them. And I passed on, passed on that lie as truth to others, and I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I even ignored scripture and sound doctrine, because I was comfortable with the lie. It made me feel good. I accepted it. I wanted to believe it. So therefore I believed it and I lived it. So with all, with all humility and humbleness, I beg your forgiveness. And I beg forgiveness from God as well. And I am ashamed, I am ashamed to tell you that I was wrong. And I repent publicly repentant of that sin and, and I beg your forgiveness as well. I am only a man. I've said that many times. And sometimes men can be fooled. But when we pass on a lie as truth, that is where we get into even bigger trouble. Even ignoring scripture because the lie tickled our tickled my ears. It was what I really wanted to hear, so it was easy to accept. To accept the lie as truth. And you probably have been lied to as well, just like I was lied to by pastors and churches with diplomas hanging on their walls as well. The question is, now, now what can we do about this lie at this very late time? Yes, God gave me many dreams and visions. God was with me many times. I felt the Holy Spirit reach down and touch me. And he even shook me. And the, and the Holy Spirit shook me so hard, I, I shook the whole bed. God sent me Bobby so that through her, I would be led to the Lord and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and repent of my sins. Because God had a work for me to do. I have heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. My mother dedicated me to God before I was even born. I can look back now and I can see how God led my life to get me to this point right now. When you make a covenant before God, it is an unbreakable covenant, and God is a witness to that covenant. On August 31st, uh, I went to bed and I stretched out my hands to heaven, like I do a lot of times when I pray laying in bed. I prayed for hours. I shook in the spirit. And I told God that I would need more of this time than a little shaking. You see, I had a burning question. And that question was, am I living in sin? Divorced and then remarried. And I have a living ex-wife who is still alive. 
but now I am remarried. It was the Lord who put this burning question in my heart, and I could not let it go. Not until I heard from God on this. I was not going to give this up until I got my answer, so I prayed on. I eventually got out of bed and I got on my knees and I prayed on. I called out to God and I said, my salvation is very important to me, or my soul spends eternity is the most important question in the world to me, and especially the way the world is going now, as I know our days are numbered and time grows ever shorter. I prayed on. I just kept shaking and kept praying in the spirit, but I, I was not about to quit until I heard from God on this very important question to me. I prayed until the sun came up, and finally I felt that my prayer had been heard. So, being so sleepy, I, I laid down, I fell asleep. But at 10 a.m., I was woken up by the Holy Spirit, and he started to speak to me. I got my answer, and I got so much more. The first thing the Holy Spirit said to me was, three to four weeks is all we have. Then he said something that floored me. He said, your garments are found with a spot. I was floored. I was absolutely floored. I thought with all my dreams and visions and all the contact I had had with the Holy Spirit, I thought I was clean. I thought I was ready to be raptured. The Holy Spirit did not say that we would be raptured in three to four weeks, but he said that all we had was three to four weeks. What else could it be? A warning to all of us. Also, I gave this to Bobby. I got this from the Holy Spirit to give to Bobby. Tony's mother cannot wait to meet you as you were the one who was chosen to save her son, me, to help put his feet on the right path to God and salvation. But I have one more work for you to do. Sister Jay is waiting for you, Sister Oni is waiting for you, and many others are waiting to see you also. And we are so very close. Look around you. The Holy Spirit, Spirit brought this to my memory as I totally forgot this. I totally forgot it for years and years and years. I totally forgot this. Two weeks before I married Carolyn, my ex-wife, my mother sat me down at the kitchen table and she begged me not to marry Carolyn. With tears in her eyes, she said, and I quote, you are not right for each other. I feel it and I know it. If you marry her and then later you divorce, you will not be able to remarry, not as long as Carolyn is alive. It doesn't matter, even if it's just before your wedding day or a few minutes before, it's never too late until you say, I do. Then it's too late. If you are divorced and remarried, with a living ex, or if you are married to someone who has a, a living ex, then you are in the same boat that we are in, adultery. Also, the Holy Spirit told me this uh, last night. Think of this as a fast with repentance, the most important fast you will ever do. Now, I am not asking, now, now I'm asking, I'm begging if you will find yourself, if you find yourself in the same situation as Bobby and, and myself, we beg you to join us in your own fast, a separation and repentance. Remember, we only have weeks and not many of those. So this will not be a fast of years, but only of weeks, maybe even days. A very important fast. You must separate, become totally separate so as not to be married any longer. Separate. Separate. If you cannot move out of the house, then you mo must both agree that you are both, you are only brother and sister to each other and not husband and wife. Separate beds, no kissing or hugging, no wedding photos on display, no out outward signs of affection, no hand holding. You may not sit at the table together for a meal, as that is for family and you must be separate, separated in public and in private. I was told to give you this. You can have three to four weeks of marriage together, but then spend an eternity separated in a lake of fire. Or you can be separate now for a little while and then spend eternity together, but not as husband and wife, but still together forever in paradise. This choice is yours.
I was told that my garments had a spot, and now I am desperately trying to remove that spot so I can make heaven my home. And you can join us in this fast as well. Just because we are living in adultery is not a death sentence, but we must deal with it. And we must deal with it right away, as there is not much time left. If you have the means to separate into different homes, that is the best solution, and repent of your sins. If not, then you must join me in this fast, separate and repent of your sins. The Holy Spirit also said, I have been with you. I have worked through you, showing you much. But think just how much more closer you can be to God in your salvation if it's, if it's complete and you walk with God. This sin is why I never could enter you and dwell and live in you. I could only touch you and give you dreams. And you always knew I was missing in your heart. You always knew something was missing. It was I. Since our separation, I feel closer to God. I get on my knees and pray and repent more. I hear, I hear the Holy Spirit easier now, as I do not have that sin in between me and God anymore. Do you live in sin, with sin between you and God? If so, now is the time to deal with it, not tomorrow tomorrow may be too late now is the time to get your garments clean because the king is coming to take us home and this is one trip you will not want to miss Matthew 5 and 32 but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife saving for the cause of forn fornication cause of her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery mark 10 11 and 12 and he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife, and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband, and be married to another, she committeth adultery. Luke 16 and 18 Whosoever putteth away his wife, and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. Matthew 19 and 9 and I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except for fornic be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Except it be for fornication, that refers only to the Jewish espousal period. And if you notice, it uses the word fornication, not adultery. Adultery is what you do when you're married. Fornication is what you do when you're single. Romans 7 and 3. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Matthew 19 and 6. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Mark. 10 and 9. What therefore for God had joined together, let no man put asunder. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This is why we are trying to wash in the blood of Jesus, to wash and cleanse ourselves so that we can make heaven our home. Hosea 4 and 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. But thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7, 10-11 And unto the married I command ye, command yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and not, let not the husband put away his wife. Remember also that King David, he committed adultery with Bathsheba, 
And but David, he was he repented of his sin, and he was forgiven. So we can be forgiven as well. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. First Corinthians seven seven to eleven. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, let not I but the Lord, let not thy wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Second Timothy 3, 1-7 Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The word covenant breaker is also the same word as truce breaker, directly referring to breaking of a covenant, a marriage vow. Marriage is a covenant made before God, and nothing break that, breaks that covenant other than death. Many are in the same boat as me and Bobby. We are not alone in this. And you are not alone either. Now that you know the truth, are you willing to do this special fast? It may only be for a few days or for, for, for a very few weeks. After all, look what Jesus did. He suffered and died for us. So what are you willing to do for Jesus? I know God led me to this point with all my dreams and visions and the word and the contact I've had from the Holy Spirit with all my videos that I've made so that now you might believe me with this very hard message. I will not tickle your ears. These are the last days. And you may only have days or weeks and precious few weeks at that. Remember when you fast, an easy fast, it means nothing to you and it means nothing to God. But if you're fast, if it's hard, difficult, long, and, and if you if you suffer in the sacrifice, you will earn much rewards in heaven. Are you not willing to sacrifice to make heaven your home? Consider the alternative very carefully. There is no plan B. It's either heaven or hell. I was called. For this time right now i was told this by the holy spirit i was told this multiple times and i was called right now to give this message to you a humble message with much love right now and i am not above anyone as we have committed the same sin as many of you I have no diploma to point to. I am just the dust of the earth. But I am God's dirt. We all love you so very much. And you all, you, you all, every one of you have been a blessing sent by God to us. And we pray that we see you, that we join you on the streets of gold one day very soon. With much love and more grace from above. Amen. And if you were in the same boat as me and Bobby, I pray, I beg that you join us in this fast, that you separate. If you have a, a living ex, 
if your wife, if your husband has a living ex, I pray that you do this fast, that you separate, that you pray, repent of sin, get in the will and grace of God, because we only have days, weeks, time is so short, time is so short. I find myself wanting to be in prayer all the time now, and repenting, repenting, repenting. Because I know, I know I've been, I've done wrong. And I repent of that sin. I repent of that sin. And I beg that, I beg that you forgive me. I beg that you forgive me. We love you all so very much. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name I pray. Amen.